Ladies, Ladies and gentlemen, and gentlemen thank, you, thank so you so much for joining us for this, for this very special session at the World, at the World Economic, Economic Forum. Forum. We have had, we have had many, many extraordinary conversations here, but I think, but I think this, one this one is going to be uh, truly special. We have, we have uh, an, address an address by a world leader and then a panel, a panel of world leaders to discuss what is really the central issue in the world today, which is Russia's war on Ukraine, the West's response, the world's response, uh, and where that will go. To start us off, you know, they, they sometimes say uh, there are people who need, need no introduction. I think that this might be the definition of, uh, of such a person, but I think there's another definition, definition that, comes that comes to mind. I think that in, uh, in, uh, in years to come, when dictionaries, dictionaries are, trying are trying to decide how to, you to describe, describe and, define and define the word courage, word courage they, might they might say such a quality, such a quality as, President as President Zelensky of Ukraine demonstrated, demonstrated during, the during the Russian invasion, invasion of his country. So without, so without any, further any further ado, the first order, order of business is we will we hear directly from Kyiv live from the, from the president of Ukraine. Ukraine. I, will I will take, take one, one second before to just let you all know that we have a very special situ situation, situation right now, which is, which is the first lady of Ukraine is in the audience, the audience and, she and she will be watching, watching her, her husband. Mr. President, Mr. president Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for this minute. Only one minute, but it keeps the memory about so many people. Ukraine lives thousands of such minutes, including three minutes on January 14th. Three minutes. The time it took for a a Russian missile to travel hundreds of kilometers, hit a residential block in Dnipro, and kill at least 45 people. 45, and that's children, 45. My address will be short about the time we are short of, about small minutes, about years made of these minutes. Three years ago, I spoke at the Davos for the first time in person. The topic was how to build a cohesive and sustainable world. And I'm talking online now, 
And the topic is how to cooperate in a divided, fragmented world. Conclusions, they are obvious. The world cannot keep the pace with changes and challenges. The list of crises, global security, environmental, food security, energy wants, needs to be amended with another one. The time crisis. The list of calls for decisive, efficient joint actions needs to be expanded with one more. The call for speed. The speed of decisions making. Reaction of the civilized world. Tragedies are outpacing life. The tyranny is outpacing the democracy. Russia needed less than one second to start the war. The world needed days to react with first sanctions. The time the free world uses to think is used by the terrorist state to kill. Ukraine and its allies have been resisting it for almost a year. This period proved all our prompt actions brought positive results. The opening of European borders for Ukrainians, the Grain Deal, the energy unit, together they saved millions, millions of lives, and not only in Ukraine. It is not only Ukraine, but the whole world needs exactly this pace of decisions and actions. The world was hesitant in 2014 when Russia, without hesitation, occupied the Crimea. The world was hesitant in 2022 when Russia, without hesitation, made the world full scale. The world must not hesitate today and ever. When the evil seeks revenge, the world needs resolve and speed. Russia is exporting terror. Russia is spreading the strain of the war around the world. Ukraine offers the world a peace formula. Please, 10 steps that the world must make faster than Russia makes its new moves. Mobilization of the world must outpace the next military mobilization of our joint enemy. The supply of Ukraine with air defense systems must outpace Russia's next missile attacks. The supplies of Western tanks must outpace another invasion of Russian tanks. The restoration of security and peace in Ukraine must outpace Russia's attacks on security and peace in other countries. A tribunal for military crimes must prevent new ones. The expansion of NATO and the EU must outgo the spread of the Russian aggression. We routinely defend values which some of the allies take for granted as a fact of life. For us, the, the fact of life is the world in need of resolute and prompt steps. Ladies and gentlemen, three years ago was my first time at the WEF. It was the time when the world was fighting COVID-19. It was it fought and won. Now the world is fighting against Putin. In three years, we will be discussing new challenges and threats in the Davos. What will this mean? It will mean we will definitely overcome the current threat. The history repeats itself. At first, the world either fails to notice or underestimates a threat. Then it unites to resist it, and then the world wins. Every time, the same outcome. The world overcame Nazism, the apartheid, pandemics, the indifference to climate changes, financial crisis, and the Kremlin strain, the world will overcome again. This is how much can be said in a matter of minutes. 
This is how much can be understood in a matter of minutes the world will overcome again. The time is high to make it happen faster. Slava Ukraine. Mr. President, thank you so much for that moving address. Let me ask you a few questions. I know how pressed you are, so thank you in advance for this. And of course, let me extend my condolences and I think everybody in this audience's condolences for the terrible tragedy that took place in Ukraine. In November and December, the world watched with amazement as Ukrainian forces liberated one town and city after another. It seems now as though the war has moved into something that looks more like a stalemate. Can you tell us what the war looks like to you on the front lines right now? If I can, I switch on Ukraine and Thank you so much. Thank you for the question. You know, you know, Farid, thank you for your condolences, by the way. I think the war doesn't look good it has not been good since the beginning and really in winter time it slows down for known and understandable reasons everyone gets tired the nature the people and thanks god the enemy too how it looks it looks as follows daily are these fights in the east of our country. We are standing strongly, resolutely. I am thankful to all of our warriors, the living ones, the ones that we've unfortunately lost for their bravery. It's very important to know that we are strong, not just in the east of our country, where it's really hard, but we are also strong inside the nation, inside our state. We are united, we are mobilized because we are motivated. It was not us who started the war, but it is us who will have to end it, end it on our lands, having it deoccupied. With due respect to our people and our sovereignty, as regards other parts of our nation, the south, the north parts, we do control the situation and definitely the processes have slowed down a bit for a variety of reasons. And it is not just about us keeping united inside the country. We need to have the whole world united around our joint values. And because of that, we truly need to continue with that support of Ukraine, to continue with supplies of necessary ammunition that we require to gain the victory over the enemy on the battlefield. We also need the financial support of it. I'd like to thank all the nations, the European Union, for the support of our budget deficit, and they're continuing the, to support us this year. I also think it is really important uh, that, you know, given the energy challenges that we are seeing, and this, these are surely related to disrespect of the humankind, you know, of the attacks against our grid, against our energy sector with Iranian drones, with Russian missiles, in order to instill chaos inside the country. Because of that, we definitely need assistance from our partners with a defense system. Lots of these, 
I know this is a deficit, but I'd like to thank all many countries worldwide for their assistance, also with alternative energy connectivity solutions. From what it looks like now, Russia intends to get this revenge and we think that they will succeed because they're fighting not just Ukraine but the whole civilized approach towards life. Thank you. Um, Yesterday, Yesterday in Davos, Davos um, Henry, Kissinger Henry Kissinger suggested that while Ukraine, while Ukraine must be supported, and in fact he came out in favor of Ukraine's membership in NATO, there must also be a dialogue with Russia, because Russia must be a part of the global order. You know Russia very well. You speak Russian fluently. Um, what are your thoughts on Russia's place in the world? I don't know the proper place for it. I think uh, that Russia has already earned a place among terrorists, and this no longer depends on their leadership. No, I think their leaders are no longer affecting the development of Russian Federation, its culture, and so on. Everything depends on the strength of Ukraine, its support by the partners, the political support from the world, as well as from the Russian society. They have to open their eyes if they want to see the future of the Russian Federation with their eyes. They have, will have to recognize their own mistakes, they will have to recognize the UN statutes, and they will have to really respect our territorial integrity. I'm really glad to hear that Mr. Kissinger changed his mind. Our priority today, our political task today, is to see that different political leaders and figures, those who are still very relevant or have been relevant until recently, for them, to be able to recognize the great mistake that Putin committed, for them to recognize this is Russia's aggression. These moments, it is very important for them as well to politically pressure on Russia to stop this bloody aggression. As regards NATO, we clearly understand that security guarantees are among the top priorities for us. Speaking of our formula for peace, it is among the 10 priorities. We don't understand that at the moment we are not in NATO yet. Unfortunately, Russia does understand this as well, and they do their damnedest to not make it easier for us to join. But we are on the way towards NATO because NATO is the best security guarantee for us, for our country, for our kids, for our country. So we have suggested security guarantees for our nation, and we think that the civilized world is going to support our proposals. Finally, Mr. President, the accident, uh, the helicopter crash, we think was an accident. We hope it was an accident, but it did raise in my mind, and it of course must have raised in your mind, the question of your own safety. Um, do you feel that there are still ongoing active threats that are increasing. Uh, do you worry about your own security every day? No, I'm not worried about that. I don't have anything to add here. Well, you see. You said it. You said it once, sir. With, uh, you, you don't need uh, a ride. You need ammunition, right? No, nothing has changed. We still need ammunition. I'm not in haste to anything, to anywhere.
Ви додати, якщо можна. Just to add with your permission. You said accidents. I'd like to tell you that because of the war experience that I have now, my society has now, this is not an accident because it has been due to war, and the war has many dimensions, not just on the battlefield. There are no accidents at wartime. These are all war results, absolutely. All those steps, everything happening, missiles striking our civilians, our kids being killed in kindergartens, at schools. Someone might try to spread information that it was us who had our own civilians at the crosshairs and they were just wanted to hit some power block and that just a mishap. This is different. Just empty words. Every individual, every death is a result of the war. Mr. President, thank you for your time. You've been very generous. Best of luck.